We are back, and we're being joined by our final guest of the evening. He is UFC middleweight Owale Bambuse. You know, uh, you know, you know. Unfortunately, he's on a two-fight skid, but looking get, getting back to his win, winning ways. Uh, I believe you're already slated for your next matchup uh, in December, right? Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Alessio. Was it uh, D D D Chirico? Is, is that is that how you say it? Man, uh, to be honest, I don't really. I, I never even really tried to fully pronounce his name. I just, I just ran with his first name, and and that's it. Man, when I'm watching video on him, footage, game planning, and overall studying uh, in my next opponent, Alessio, that that's the only thing I refer to him by, his first name. There you go. Well, most of the time, that's that, that's that's what most uh, most most fighters do. Is just uh, go with the first name. You don't really have to worry about the last name. Let the uh, let the ring announcer worry about that one, right? Exactly. Now I kind of know how uh, my opponents or even other people who try to pronounce my name. Now I know how they feel with this guy, Alessio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was even like uh, we we just had a we just had a guest on, and he was. Uh, he was uh, mis- misenunciating the last name. I was like, no, 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 no. It's, it's this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both have some uh, intriguing last names, but uh, we're both a representation of, you know, our names fully of our countries. So let's go, baby. Nigeria versus Italy. Let's fucking go, man. Excuse my French. Man. Oh let's go. wait, I forgot to tell you. You heard who got you heard who got signed today, right? Uh, who are uh, 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 Eighth Wonder? Yes, sir. Zoo. I yes, know, sir. man. He's 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 had to work really hard, man. I wonder why you. Too I wonder hard. what took the UFC he, so long. This is going to happen. To, uh, he should have been in the UFC two years ago. Two years ago, that's after, what I'm after saying. He beat, after he beat Pinillo for 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 the second time, he should have gotten a shot right after that. With Seriously, how, man. They don't care and about heavyweights. They don't care about heavyweights anymore. It's amazing. I mean, they well, do not guy, care about heavyweights anymore. Like, you got you got a guy who's from Philly who has who has a a, a, a judo background and he likes to freaking throw hammers at heavyweight. But you're not going to sign the guy for what? Because he's, he's a little bit uh, uh, he's over because he's over thirty five. That doesn't make sense to me. It's the same thing with um with um. So with, that uh, entire Odom. division. That entire division. I mean, like, yeah, the average age is like thirty six. But he's excited. <laughs> he's not like one of these wrestlers who likes to lay on top of guys in, in heavyweight. Exactly. He's one of these guys who likes exactly. to throw hammers, man. Listen, that man is gonna bring that man is gonna bring the heat, man. And it's sad because, in my opinion, it's like you know you have a guy who has a very high KO TKO ratio. It's not like once again he's you know, utilizing decision wins or 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 you know like you guys mentioned with being a wrestler and freaking sitting on guys. He's not one of those type of heavy heavyweights. He likes to trade, man. He's got good stand up too, particularly good boxing. And he's Nigerian, man. This is what we do, man. It's in the blood, man. <laughs> but yeah, but it's just I love like it. it's I love just it. like I had it's just it's just like I had said on, on, on your show, Steve, and on our show. They had Carl Robertson, who is a light heavyweight, win on the contender. They signed him. They want to sign him as a middleweight. Why? He's a light heavyweight. Well, no, light he heavyweight wants to be a needs more fighters. They, but they need they more light heavyweights. It doesn't mean that, but it doesn't <laughs> Especially mean he now, could, he with John be, Jones gone. But it doesn't mean Yo, he can't I, be the company man, and, and if, some, if the fight falls out, that, like, hey, we got we to gotta fight for you in, in two weeks. You know, it's, it's fairly close to where you're at. You know, would you be interested in taking that fight? We've seen Jeremy Stevens, you know, just fought a featherweight last night. He's, out of, he's had fights at lightweight. Same thing with, with Gil. Yeah. He's trying to have fights at lightweight, but now ask, he's moving to featherweight. Yeah, Ask Frankie Listen, man, how it is to be the company man. Ask Frankie yeah, how I mean, it is to be the company man. It's one of those things where <laughs> you have to really put your foot down when it comes to your what weight class you want to be in as a fighter, straight up. Like, even with me, man, I, I get a lot of people who tell me, hey, man, you should be a 170 or Motherfucker, I'm already skinny as, skinny as it is. You know what I'm saying? For me to cut, <laughs> no, seriously, because I'm not the most Wait jacked a minute, one, did you uh, just call yourself skinny? Wait, did you just yeah, call yourself but, skinny? Yeah. You, oh, you know what? Let me let me, rephrase, let me rephrase that. Wait, let me no. rephrase that. Slim Brolic. Slim Brolic. I should be mad at you because you <laughs> beat my teammate in his first pro fight in Ring of Combat. I should be Ooh. mad at you, bro. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Mike Elshami. Oh, Elshami. No, oh, Mike 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 yeah. <laughs> Yo, I like that. I love that guy, yeah. man. To this day, me and him, nothing, nothing but mutual respect, man. I love that guy. He's awesome. 
A true professional, yeah, that, Michael Shami. But, but the problem with that fight was, for, for those of us who weren't there, because uh, Go Fight Live had it, you bought the stream, the fight started, you guys stood in the middle of the cage like, uh, like, Rock, <laughs> like the end of Rocky Three, where you see the painting where they both throw, and then the next yeah. thing you know, it stops with the fight being separated, and then that's it. My wife and I were sitting yeah. at home like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they do that, I guess, so people could buy it. Or if you if you bought it, that's bullshit, man. But I know for a fact when Google Fight Live gives you previews of the videos of uh, past fights uh, to, to intrigue you or draw you in, they'll give you a no, little bit of a clip. Live. This was live. Oh, that's this crazy. That's crazy. That's bullshit. Oh, no, I got my money that's back, crazy. bro. I got my money. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess it was that fast. But it wasn't that fast. It actually took me, it wasn't like, I didn't beat him in seconds. I had to, you know, I had to really, I had to really set him no, up, you know. Was my, was pretty good. good fight to begin with. But he dropped weight. Oh. Now. He's, you know, he's not, he's not at one, uh, what was that, 180 or 185 you guys are fighting at. He, uh, yeah, you know, he's dropping. He's 170, dropping, right? He's dropping. Yeah, he's dropping yeah. 170 now, yeah. It's funny because he fought at a higher weight, even in the amateurs. But once again, he was comfortable with that weight, and he was kicking ass, bro. He was submitting guys huge, way bigger than him. Um, that's why when he went pro, it was only right because that's usually what happens when you fight at a at a let, let's say you fight at some random weight as, as an amateur. When you go pro, usually what guys do is go to the next lower weight. So that's what Michael Shami ended up doing. He stopped fighting at two hundred five. And then when he went pro, he decided to fight at 185. But really, he has the frame of a, a 170 year. I mean, he could fight at 185. Heck, if he even believes in himself that much, he could probably do two, you know, fight at 205. But, you know, once again, the guys at the pro level, man, these guys cut so much weight and they're fantastic athletes. So I kind of see the idea behind, you know, um, people, you know, being adamant about telling people, you, know, you got to drop, man. You know, these guys are too big. But at the same time, I truly believe if that fighter believes he, he has attributes that could allow him to defeat, you know, fighters in his weight. Um, and if, if and if that fighter feels good, let that fighter fight. And that's me, man. I take a Bruce Lee approach. I don't take a wrestler's approach. I don't give a fuck about size. I care about how I'm moving, how my energy level is, you know, how comfortable I am. You know what I mean? I don't want to go in there depleted, you know, just because I want to be the bigger guy. But then I end up losing what I what I usually have in all my fights, my speed, my footwork. I'm not trying to lose that shit. Fuck that. I'm trying to get out of the way of those blows. I'm not trying to stay there and just trade. You know, I cut to 170. I'm probably going to be a freaking, you know, I'm going to be an easy target, a freaking a human, uh, you know, punching bag. And I'm, I'm not trying to, well, you know, all because I'm tired. You'd be sucked. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I'm, I'm not trying to do it. That's why, for me, it's about me proving myself each and every fight that I, look at me and Paulo. Paulo was bigger than me, but who, give a, who gives a fuck? I still took his big ass down, and I was giving him the business. But I ran out of gas, and, and it is what it is. You know, I ended up losing the fight. But, you know, it was a fight that I was winning. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, no one's perfect. And that's what I realized, man. I, I was beating myself over the head over that loss. Like, fuck, why did I have to lose to this guy? The same guy which fucking mushed me, you know what I mean? Like, prior, during weigh-ins, in front of the whole fucking world, embarrassing me, you know what I mean? Like, this is a guy you beat the shit out of. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Like, you know, but it is what it is. You know, what I did get out that fight is that I was beating that man's ass. And... Whatever, he got a lucky break. But you know what? Now I got to work on those aspects that won't give guys lucky breaks when they fight me. Like, you're, there's no way you're going to escape this ass whooping. I'm going to beat your ass for three rounds if I don't knock you out in between any of those rounds. I'm going to make sure I beat you up every single round. And I'm going to have the cardio to do it, the, the great coaching staff to do it, and the mindset as well. So, you know, I'm fired up, man. I can't wait for December. You know, no, no offense to Alessio, man, but I'm going to run through him, man, and, and every every guy after him. And it is what it is, you know. And, and not for nothing, I felt like I had more of a – I have more challenges, uh, you know, in my, in my you know, my, my UFC fights prior. Uh, no offense to, to him, but like I said, man, um, I'm going to come at him with the same heat. Same fire I came at with, with Paulo, you know, Cesar Ferreira, you know, uh, Daniel Serafin, and even fucking Hall. I'm going to come at Alessio with the same heat, the same fire, but a little bit more controlled, more relaxed, pacing myself, but I'm going to light that man up. 
Yeah, man, like you, you've been on fire for, for a lot, you know, like, you know, I'm not even going to go into, you know, what happened after your fight, you know, you know, and, and all that. I want to talk about what, you know, you know, you've made some changes, you're, 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 you're changing up your training, you're, you've gone down there to, uh, to Rufus Sport and Duke Rufus and, and, and them guys down there. And, 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 uh, I want to know, man, like, do, do you feel that, that, uh, that 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 attachment to, to to them and and being able to have access to, to those guys and the, and those coaches, do you feel that's going to you know uh, you know polish up so, some things that that you were that you were good at making even better and kind of fill those holes you know and and uh, you know is is uh, is Duke going to be the only guy you're going to be working with? Uh great question, man. So for the most part, man, Duke Rufus is. Uh, uh, Jim and him as a whole, I, I've already, you know, I only stood there for a week so far. I'm, you know, I'm about to make my way back there soon. I'm um, there in this month, but man, it, I've seen tremendous change and, and progress and, and just my ability to focus when it comes to striking. And Duke and I, we're very, very like similar in how we think and how we process things. And, Yo, we were just flowing, man. You know, one of my first times, spar- you know, doing pads with the guy, and we were just flowing. And, and it's rare where you find a coach where you just straight up just meet each other, and y'all do pads, and y'all just flow like that, you know. So I know it's going to be a great um, a combination between us, like a Phil Jackson and a and a, and a Kobe, baby, because Kobe's my man. That's my that's my dude right there, you know what I mean? So, you know, it's only right I had to bring him up in the analogy. But, yeah, man, you know, I, I feel like, you know, coaching and and and, and – and players, they go hand in hand, man. You know, you could be a great player, but if you don't have the right coach, the right person in your ear, you're not going anywhere, period. It's just straight up. Or if, I mean, or if you're that player that doesn't need any coaches, which I highly doubt exists, you know, kudos to you. But I know I'm not that perfect. You know, I'm far from it. And I've been trying to, you know, do a lot on my own as a fighter, and it it, it's, it, it has cost me, you know what I mean? So I told myself, you know, I got to stop. I got to make a change. Plus, I have really good managers who have been, you know, really, you know, uh, chiming in, giving me good advice, and, and it's my job to make sure that I listen uh, to them and any other good advice that, that's given to me. And uh, Duke, so far, is a great fit. Um, and I am looking for uh, other, maybe one or two other gyms to uh, possibly visit. Uh, one of which has a, a solid uh, grappling, MMA grappling type pedigree. Because to be honest, the goal is to be the perfect fighter, man. Uh, even though I know I'm not perfect, but I want to be close to it. So meaning the same energy that I bring towards my, you know, the same energy and, and fierceness that I bring in my stand-up, I want my ground game uh, to be the same way. Or it is going to be the same way. Heck, maybe it already is. Who knows? But I want to test it. And the only way for me to do that is to, you know, to go out there, you know, uh, to, to, you know to, to these world-class camps, you know, and, and, and continue to build on these relationships and, and partnerships that, that I'm that I'm building with, with, with specific gyms. But, but yeah, man, to, you know, guys like Khabib and King Velasquez, you know, I look at these guys and I'm like, you know what? I want to be similar to these guys when I fight. You know what I mean? But in my own way. But on the ground, man, I want it to be like that. You know what I mean? But I want to figure out my own niche. You know, but these are guys that I'm looking at, you know, to mimic my game especially my ground game after because – and uh, cardio as well. These guys, their cardio – man, they have some of the best cardio in the game, probably if not the best, Khabib and, uh, and King Velasquez. So, you know, I'm looking at these guys and, you know, it's up to, uh, you know, um, us as individual fighters to, to look at other fighters, um, past or present, uh, who we want to mimic our game after, who we want to take attributes of. And for me, you know, Khabib and uh, King Velasquez, especially when it comes to the ground and their cardio – that's that's where I'm looking at because I know I know for a fact once I master my cardio to at least to a, a, a level of where Kane is, nobody's fucking with me, man. That's period, man. I'm gonna beat that ass, man, for three to five rounds, man. And there's nothing you could do about it. There's just nothing you could do about it because I'm not gonna get tired. I'm gonna be in your face, nonstop, laying the hammer, man, laying bombs. And that's that's Kane for you. When Kane fights, that man is gonna basically beat your ass. For five rounds, man. That's and I love watching the man fight, man. So you know that that that's pretty much it when it comes to you know my whole mindset and my goal um, as far as coaching goes and overall development. You know, I'm 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 always going to be branching out. You know, you know, uh, meeting different fighters, world class fighters, world class coaches, and and, and getting better, man. Because that's the ultimate goal to get better. I can't I can't stay in New York anymore and just try to figure things out, man. Fuck that, man. You know, I, I you know you know what they say. If you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And I made it here, so it, it's time to venture off. You know. 
some of the well, things. I got to say, you should. Training that roof is you know, you want to. You, you want to work on your ground game and your cardio. Ben Askren's probably the best guy for you to work with. I mean, uh, he's well, how much his longer is Ben going to be around there, especially because he just retired. Yeah, he retired. Yeah, I'm sure he's still going to coach. <laughs> I'm oh, sure I he's still going to coach. I, I understand. You know what's so that, crazy? Got to think like, go ahead, go ahead, guys. Yeah, yeah. When I was there, I didn't know he was the wrestling coach there. I, uh, from, to my knowledge, it was someone else. I think they just recruited him as a wrestling coach, so that's great. So next time when I go there, I'm definitely going to work with him. But the time when I, at the time when I was there, I didn't, um, I didn't know that he was a wrestling coach. But I just heard. And did he just really just retire? Is that true? Yeah, he literally he's got one, one more fight. fight. He just, he's his, got his, one more fight. Last, and that's it. Yeah, he basically said that. And, uh, you know, he just came after his last offense. Basically said that uh, one more and he's done. Which is a shame because he, uh, you know, I really would have liked to see him uh, uh, at least get get a handful of fights in the UFC to see if uh, if, uh, well, if Dana was he, just. Uh, go it ahead. was wrong on both sides. Uh, there was wrong on both sides. Oh, yeah. of that. From from Ben's oh, yeah. side and from Dana's side, you're talking about the two most petty people when, when it comes <laughs> to, to certain things. You, you know what I mean, like. Dana, Dana is so petty, it, it's unbelievable. And Ben just doesn't give a shit because Ben was making his money in, in China or no, wherever the hell else one, did, one FC yo, is. Yo, when, when, when he did that, that Adele song, he had me dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. That's too funny with that. I had me dying. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, it was um, that, but it was But, he, but not he to kinda, go too far off. He kind of screwed but not to himself. Go too far off. Hold on, hold on one second before, before we... Hit. We go too far off the track. Uh, just, you know, what we've heard out of, out of you so far, Wally, the, the, you know, I've interviewed you before. The, the, the sheer exuberant excitement that I, that I hear out of your voice when you're talking about these changes you've made and what you've seen so far, I can only imagine where, where, where you know, where, where, where it's going to translate inside of, inside of uh, that, that octagon, man, regardless if it's in December or not. I mean, like, dude, you got me so pumped over here. My, like, dude, I'm like, I'm sweating. I'm like, uh, he's just talking. I'm the one sweating. What's going on here? So, I mean, dude, he- hearing hearing just how, how how you responded to this, you know, like I said, we've talked before. I haven't heard you this excited about uh, about training, about work, about about working and grinding since uh, you know, at least since since the last time I talked to you. It sounds like. Uh, you know, you're a different person. I mean, hell, last time we talked, remember, we, uh, you were. You, uh, I got to ask you about that too. Are are, are you still, uh, you know, uh, still still no uh, no extracurriculars? Uh, still still on that road? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Like as far as like um, uh, you mean like uh, my degree goes and stuff like that, or what do you mean by extracurricular? No 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 no. Remember, remember last time we were talking, you uh, you told me that uh, you know. Uh, you're 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 celibate right now. You haven't uh, you haven't had any extra extracurricular activities outside of that. Oh, in, in terms of that, yeah. I mean, I mean, for me, it's one of those things. Like I said, man, everything is about um, sacrifice, and you know, I'll continue to make my necessary sacrifices to be where I need to be. And uh, and ultimately, you know, in life, li- life is about um, what you want. All right, and and how you work towards it, not what you wish for, not what the fuck you hope for. How are you working towards your goals? That is what gets you to where your potential future is. Okay, that that, that, that and and for me, I I have visions and 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 I'm working towards those visions. I'm not just hoping and wishing, you know, and and, and believing that you know somehow it'll just drop on my lap. That's not how life operates. And you know, I, I thank God that He's giving me the understanding to. You know, to see that, you know, I have to continue to work. You know, I have to continue to build. I have to continue to sacrifice in order to get to where I need to be. I have to continue to take risks. I have to continue to, you know, uh, you know, have uh, this belief in myself. Even if, you know, the odds are against me, I have to continue to just be positive and make rela- relative decisions based off that positivity. You know what I mean? Because life, life is tough, man. Life is hard, man. Outside of MMA, you see what we're going through as, as a world. You know, especially oh, as a know, nation, man. but as a world, you, you're going through, man. Like, dude, that's why I'm thankful for guys like you because you give us you, you give us a break from reality too when we're able to do this, like with, with, without <laughs> saying all the all the crazy negative stuff that goes on in the I world. Know. Man. You know, be, be, seriously, it, it's just it, it's nuts. You know, everyone wants to nitpick over over this. We want to we want to criticize this over that. You know, yeah. like, listen, you know, uh, I, I seen this picture. It was right after the eclipse. 
and it was um, basically sitting there saying it's you know the first time in a while that we're all not going to be we're all going to be basically doing the same thing, not worried about what color somebody's doing, what what political affiliation you have with this, that, and the third. Like you know, and, and even more like when we're seeing what's going on uh, with uh, what's going on in, in Texas and Florida with all the all the all the uh, the 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 after effects of the tornado and you seeing people, it doesn't matter if you're white, black, brown, green, whatever, you're, you're doing whatever to to help the people who who are, who are uh, are less fortunate than us right now. And it's something something like that for us to to realize that it doesn't matter, you know, you know, you know, if, if you're white, if you're middle class, if you're, if you're black collar or what, like, like it's so, it drives me nuts that, Stuff like that has to happen for us to realize, hey, you know, it doesn't matter if 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 that, if that person, you know, you know, you know, you know, may, may look like this, but in reality, you know, it, you know, he's a, he, you know, like, oh, you think that because that guy's black and he has a white beater and, and basketball shorts, well, he's he's a thug. Well, maybe he's an orthodontist and he just wants to relax when he goes home. Exactly. You know, honestly, what you mentioned is, you know, as far as Americans working together, it doesn't matter what race or creed or ethnicity. That is the America I know. I don't give a fuck about the America that that formulated or built this country. I don't give a fuck, you know, because it is what it is. It wasn't the greatest. Um, it wasn't the greatest history. And at the end of the day, we need to stop fucking like going backwards, you know, as a nation. Like, and 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 any mm-hmm. negative mindset that relates to that backwardness, it needs to be omitted, man. If not, you need to get checked, in my opinion. Like, I feel like it should be against the law to have that type of, uh, you know, hatred or negative mindset that existed in the past, you know, because it's going to bring this nation down. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I get it. All right, whatever. Freedom of speech. But freedom of speech shouldn't allow me to feel okay with killing or, you know, being negative towards another specific race. Like, that, that's not freedom of speech, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that's straight up hatred. So... No, no, it is what it is, man. But like I said, abusing, abusing, be, being able to kind of blur lines, so to speak. Yeah, in my you know, opinion. like don't do that. You know, don't, 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 don't play with the American tradition. You know, the the you know what our heritage is as people who are outspoken. You know, as people who move together, build together, work together, love one another. Like that's the America I knew. That's the generation that I grew up in. Yeah, I've heard about what happened. I've seen other things, but I don't care. Like I really don't because it it it, it happened before. It's not us anymore. You can't let a handful of idiots ru- ruin what thousands of thousands of people you know d- d- abide by on a daily basis. You can't as much as, as as you hear the saying, you can't let one apple ruin a bunch. Well, you really can't. You can't. You, you, have, to, you have to get rid of the. You, you have to, you know, dispose, get rid of, and, and pay attention to the ones that are good and right. Hundred <laughs> percent. Just to close on this topic, I just wanted to say one more thing. Like Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War, you know, he made a decision to, you know, to pretty much, you know, get rid and or abolish slavery. You know what I mean? And it, it came at the cost of a lot of lives, man. You know, so that's why it's such a hot topic. You know, sometimes when we, when, when our society revisits it, you know what I mean? Because, man, that shit almost destroyed America, man. The Civil War almost literally destroyed America. So it's like we need to stop revisiting, like, hot issues like this. Like, all right, that's it. It's over. The war was won. We we, we moved on. Fuck. Here's what everybody needs to know. There's bad people in every race, creed, color, job, it's it's just human nature. Not everybody's going to be nice. Not everybody's going to be a good person. You, you just have to surround yourself around the good people, and that, that's that's just it. That's, true. <laughs> that's just it. It's, it's I, I don't understand how things got so bad so fast. <laughs> I really don't. I, I don't know if it's just if it's the media or if it's social media it, or whatever it is. The media, but I've but never seen like anything like this. Skeletons before. that that are left in closets and they just want to keep keep reopening those closets. Yeah, them, it's too sad. It drives me nuts. But talk about but, something um, else, man. Actually, we, yeah, we we actually got we actually have a caller who's been sitting on and uh, he's got a few questions for a while. All right, no problem. Daniel, you're on with a, with, uh, with a UFC middleweight. What do you want, brother? What, do you, what questions you got for us? Yeah, I do have a question. Why do the young people today have to curse with their mouths open? Because back in my day, all you had to do was... Where'd he go? <laughs> wait, wait. What, what, Where'd he what go? was his question? 
I don't know. He I just don't got think he got to this question. Know, uh, <laughs> I, what was he yeah, asking me? He just got dropped. I don't know. We didn't, he didn't, we didn't get a chance to finish. He got dropped. I don't know what happened. I think oh, he man. Like Hold on. I, I think it's saying something about cursing and <laughs> opening your mouth. Yeah, Dan, Daniel's, uh, Daniel's, uh, <laughs> tries to, tries to get funny sometimes. I, I don't know. I, I don't know where he was going with that. He just got cut off, you know, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but, all right, cool. Talk, uh, I, I was waiting to see his punchline. I'm probably going to get a message from him in a, in a minute or so, ask him what happened, but, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, anyways, you know, we'll, we'll move on from, from, from there. And, uh, you know, um, I got to ask you, you know, uh, you know, you uh, you know, uh, with the football season started, you uh, you paying attention to anything that's going on? You got a team you're rooting for this year? Uh, always the Giants, man. Always the Giants, man. I'm I've always been a Giants oh, fan. No, are you watching well, the game by happen. any chance? <laughs> yeah, but you know what's funny? The game. Yeah, I've been keeping up <laughs> with football like I should, but with all the boycotting stuff and you know all the the craziness. I mean, it, I don't even watch TV nowadays, man. You know what I mean? Because well, you, know, no, you watch TV, the then game, the, the game's not going too well in the in the Giants' favor at the moment. <laughs> oh, what's the score right now? Sorry, what's the score? Still, uh, still, I think it's early. thirteen or fourteen, nothing. Oh, that's Dallas not too bad. And what, what half? Or the first half or first second quarter? It well, it it's halftime now, but I don't think Eli has more than like forty yards passing. Damn. <laughs> It's yeah, it's it's bad. It's it's shaped. Yeah, up he can't be rusty bad. already, man. He's younger than well, his brother. He Odell, can't be rusty Odell's already. Odell's not playing today. O- Odell's not playing. He's he's sitting on the bench. He's uh, he's injured. Oh, oh yeah, his leg is his knee still messed up. I I don't know. They showed they showed a video of him catching passes before the game. I, I personally, what I think I it still is, think I it's something to do money. with the. Um, I still think it has yeah, to do. With I think the money it's money. Too, yeah. Yeah. I think it's money. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Wait, what happened? So he's supposed to get more in his contract or something? What's going on? He, well, he's, he's asking, asking he's in for the last year. Yeah, I think he's in the last year yeah. or something, ain't he? So if he, yeah. they, 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 don't, they don't pay him, he goes he goes to free agency. And Oh, man. Which I'm sorry. That dude. Now, uh, let the, here's, this is perfect because we have a fighter on right now. You don't get punched in the face for millions upon millions of dollars, which you should. He gets to play. He gets to play for a couple months, and then gets to sit on his ass until it's time for football season, and, and he still gets paid. About what he's making. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He still gets paid, man. I mean, I'm I, I'm praying soon. Hopefully, within my time, um, you know, and and my generation rather more so that uh, you know, UFC fighters would get um paid at least a bare minimum a year, two hundred thousand at least, and that's the least fight. You know, there's only two to four times. There's only one way that's going to happen. There's only one way that's going to happen, and I don't see it happening. It's that's the union. That's the only way it's going to happen is is with the fighters' union. And you know, the the fighters that are going to stand on the forefront of that, they're going to be blackballed, of course, and they're not going to get that. You know, it's going to be for the future generations coming up behind you guys. You know, that that's the only way I see it. And that's not bad. I mean, even if, uh, as long as it happens at some point, I guess that's that's good enough. Then it not happening at uh, not happening at all. So it is what it is. I mean, um, as long as you know, once again, you know, you know, the UFC fighters eventually in the future are, are being you know paid and compensated for for what we do, man. You know, it's not easy, man. MMA is no joke, man. You know, it's, no. I believe it's, it's probably it's a sport that around. you can get injured. And you can get injured, like like in such a bad way. Like you can go in normal after a fight, and not and after that fight, you're not normal again. Like or something about your body isn't. You know that's how dangerous this sport is. You know what I mean? You can go in 100 percent healthy in one fight, well, and the next the fight, I mean, well, right after that fight. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was pretty much done. I was saying it's, it's one of the things that I think that that kind of gets not talked about. Like we just see what the NFL has been going through with, with CTE and. Uh, you know, one of the things that that I try to talk to talk to a lot of the fighters about because it's like it doesn't get talked about. You know, we just seen the the kid George Parson, You know, the, the you know you know was unfortunately killed by that drunk driver, but you know his parents had a, had donated his uh, his brain to be examined, and the kid you know is 26 years years old hasn't really had that many fights. He's got CTE. 
I mean, is that something that that you know, you know that that, that you worry about, especially you know, you know, having kids and and, and whatnot? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man. That, that's why for me, it's like when I'm in there, I do my best to you know to give my best, but I, I'm smart about my you know my body. You know what I mean, and 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 how I push myself. And even my last fight, man, I was so tired that I couldn't even do anything. You know, most fighters in that position would have probably tried to, like, you know, utilize an under underhook or, you know, take their hands off their face and grab. At that point when Pablo's on top of me, you know, pounding away, I'm like, dude, you're fucking tired. There's nothing you can do, man. Just keep your hands up, block your face, because <laughs> you're already tired. You know, if he just fucking blows wind at you, you're gonna, you're probably going to pass out, man. So talk less of a freaking, you know, punch coming downward, you're going to be done. So I think little things like that for me, you know, is important as a fighter to understand, you know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't push yourself too much to the point where, you know, your, your want to win, you know, destroys your health futuristically. You know, it's not that serious. You know what I mean? Like go in there, give your best, but if you lost, man, be smart, preserve your body. You know what I mean? There'll be another fight. Like, don't, don't just, don't, if it's over, don't try to, like, fight through it, and the next thing you know, you get knocked out even worse uh, than you would have if you would have defended yourself better. And I think every fighter should keep that in mind, or any combat sports athlete. You know, go in there, do, have fun, do your thing, but, you know, protect yourself, man. It's not that serious. Well, yeah, you, you know, it, it, just like what you said, yeah, that, that you know, that's perfect because, uh, a lot of people were talking about the whole Tim Means thing. I, I know you you know about that, where you know he he went into boxing and and he died in the ring. Well, what what a lot of people aren't looking at is when he was fighting at heavyweight in MMA, he was knocked out cold, not TK, knocked out cold, eight times, cold. Oh. That's not counting. That's not counting how many times he was knocked out in training, and then. The commission gives him a boxing license to go in and box, and and then gets a fight six months later, which unfortunately is where he passed away after being knocked out again. So there's a lot of things that come into that. You know, if a guy is getting knocked out in training, he should not go into a. If he's knocked out in camp. You should not be going into your fight because, you know, your fight camps are like, what, three months? If yeah. you get knocked out in training, you should not be going into a cage or a boxing ring within that three-month span because your chin's not going to be where it needs to be because your head's not going to be where it needs to be. So you're just me and you both too know. much punishment. 100%, but me and you both know that, you know, what goes on in camp um, – you know, usually stays in camp, you know, so whether you get dropped or whether you drop somebody else or whatever the case may be, you know, it, it stays within the camp and w within whatever it was that you were training to get to prepare yourself for that fight. Now, um, on the other hand, if you've been knocked out previously, at least over five times or at least four times, fuck that, three times, cold. If you got knocked out three times, cold, in any fight, then I think – um, there should be more of a rigorous uh, process for, you know, you moving forward. You know what I mean? Like your medicals need to be on point, you know, more more brain scans, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, God forbid, you know, you go into your next fight, you know, you can get knocked out. You know, and not only that, I believe if a fighter gets knocked out that many times and hasn't showed progression in like, or, or development rather, in his overall skill, and he's just going in there and, and just getting knocked out after knocked out, he's a liability. Don't sign that guy. You know, that guy's got to go. You're just, you're just trying to collect the check, but at the expense of the organization and, and at that combat organization's name as a whole. Nah, man, you're a liability, bro. And look what happened. He gets knocked out eight times. I had no clue of, of this guy, to be honest. So I just heard of him dying and passing away. God rest his soul. But you get, I didn't know he got knocked out eight times previously. Cold. He was, yeah, and he then goes into boxing. Times. He was okay. not. Whoever gave him that license... No offense, they should not have a job anymore. Because well, that's the why would that's you... the commission's problem. Well, that's why before the, uh, the Conor McGregor-Floyd Mayweather fight, those articles started coming out on Yahoo with doctors saying that, oh, it's not smart for Conor McGregor to do this because of the damage to the brain. Now, Conor's never been knocked out before. You know, we, we talked about this earlier. He's been rocked, but he's never been knocked out before. But that's why... 
when Floyd started tagging him in that that uh, that tenth round, yeah, maybe Who's Connor could have made it. Maybe Connor could have made it and got knocked out in that last round, but he was on a short leash to begin with. That's why they one hundred percent because Tim Tim Means' death was was on the uh, the commission. But if you go back now, do you remember when uh, Forrest Griffin fought? Uh, Anderson Silva at light heavyweight. You remember that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he was knocked out three times when, in training camp. Yeah. Oh, wow. And Anderson Anderson Silva hit him with, a, like, a flick punch. Like, something I know. that would knock anybody out. You know? I know. That's why he was knocked out three times in camp I see what you're saying. before that I fight. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So that's yeah. where, like, the, the CTE for, for, you know, you fighters is coming into place where, just like you said, what happens in training camp stays in training camp, but it, it's the coach's responsibility for the health of his fight. If you get knocked 100%. out in training camp, you know you you can't send this guy into the cage because you don't want to have a death in in the cage. I know, and it's just because of these refs. It's, you know, you, refing has to be the hardest job. It really is, and it's it, and you, you know don't know. I keep saying this to people all the time too. That that that. For for all of us that like to complain about it, really, like I know it's like referees have the most thankless job in 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 any sport. It doesn't matter if we're talking about football, basketball, you know, yeah. soccer, whatever. So the they call, have man. the most thank they have the most thankless job. But at the end of the day, if you think a lot of these these people are underqualified, inept, or whatever, go down to your local athletic commission and fill out to go to go go see what it takes to go be a referee. You know, a lot of us have been have followed the sport for, you know since its inception. Then hey, let, let's go go and relieve these guys who are literally boxing uh, 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 officials and get them out of the cage and get people who know what 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 what, what they're looking for. It's not easy, man, being well, a ref, look, man. Because well, look, yeah, but look at look not. at Pat Barry versus Chet Congo. Look at that fight, Pat Barry versus Chet Congo. That fight, that fight should have been stopped before, before Pat got knocked out. Could, could have been stopped point. when Pat Barry knocked Chet Congo down, and it looked like he was out. And then he rocked him one more time. Chet Congo woke up, ends up knocking Pat Barry out six more times. You know, so it, I mean, it's a thankless job. It's a tough job. <laughs> you know, who knows when to stop it? Because if the ref stops it too soon, Uncle Dane is on the TV yelling at the ref, saying that, you know, oh, you're too busy putting a heart in front of the camera rather than doing your job. But if he doesn't stop it soon yeah, enough, Dana, Dana does Dana's like to bitching kind of at him the same people way. under the bus for no reason. Dana's I mean, that was a very controversial fight. That was a very controversial fight you mentioned with Pat Berry and uh, Chet Congo. I mean, the ref did a great job of assessing that Congo wasn't out completely, and he wasn't. He was still fighting. Uh, even though he looked like he was still out, he was still okay. Um, and you can definitely tell the, the blow that Pat Berry landed didn't out him like the blow he gave Pat Berry. Like, well, as soon as he clipped Pat Berry, man, he went to sleep, boy. Like, um, and that's the difference. And sometimes it's hard as a referee to differentiate that, to be honest, especially if you don't want no one's life, um, and, you know, or someone's death. At, at, at you know you you don't want to be blamed for anyone's death. So like like, like you guys mentioned, man, referees have it have it hard, man. But I would say for anyone who's been knocked out previously, referees have to step in when that guy who's been previously knocked out before is on his way to being knocked out again. They have to issue. They have to step in and at that point issue with a TKO if they're on their way to getting knocked out. You don't want to wait till he's fully knocked out because it's it's happened to him already. So what's the point? If he's about to get knocked out and he has a previous, uh, he has previous records of getting knocked out, just stop the fight. That's his problem. We don't want your death on our hands, man. And you look like you were about to lose. We're stepping in. We're stopping the fight. And that's what should have happened with that guy, Tim. Whatever his name was, uh, the, the MMA fighter who transitioned to boxing. They sh- the referee should have said, you know what? This guy's been knocked out before a few times in MMA. If he's getting beat to the point where you know, I know he's going to get knocked out, Here's the thing about the, the whole. I, I don't actually. I don't put that on the referee. I put that on the athletic commission who gave him the boxing license after he was knocked out less than a month ago. Yeah, but I mean, I, unless, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but let's. You know, I, I'm going to be real here. It's not like he was no, this polarizing at, uh, heavyweight fighter. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was. He but, was maybe average at best, and that was it. 
You know what I mean? He was but not guys, the UFC cut him cut him quick. But guys, look at look at, Big Foot, look at Bigfoot Silva. Bigfoot Silva is about to do the same thing, arguably. Yeah, he just took a fight you. with uh yeah, um, with, Big, with a freaking Bigfoot, kickboxing. Bigfoot can be back on TRT now. That's that's the difference. I mean, Big, Bigfoot's the guy who who should be on TRT because of the pituitary well, problem. He's not he a has. kickboxer. He's not a kickboxer, man. No. He's going to get lit. No, he's not. He is not. He, he's going to. Well, and we all know the best his chin. Ever. <laughs> I know, <laughs> and we all know. Kickboxers. And we all know he got a glass jaw, and that's probably one of the reasons why the UFC had to cut him because he was getting knocked out way too much, and now. He's, he's, he, and now he, he he took a fight as a Glory kickboxer. See, all I have to say is that if, if Glory doesn't want another death, another MMA fighter's death in their hands, when when Bigfoot is on his way out, they got to rule it as a TKO, as opposed to giving the fans what they want and having this and having you know this guy really like knock him out cold, you know, because who knows what might happen to Bigfoot Silver after. Not that I'm sleeping on Silver in terms of him. You know, not being able to pull out a win, but come on, you know what I mean? Like, let's be real. Like, this the, the guy he's fighting is a beast. Like, he and he's a knockout expert. You know, and you know this is not Bigfoot Silver's strength. Kickboxing at best is probably grappling. You know, and this is not an MMA fight. This is a kickboxing match. So uh, I'm praying that the referees will be, you know, um, somewhat merciful if Big Bigfoot Silver is on his way out you know, step in instead of having him get knocked out cold um, and, and risking some type of death. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's something when that, I saw know. that he signed that fight, I laughed. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, they're, this, <laughs> this is just... I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but then I read into it, like, he, yeah, but he can at least be back on the TRT now, so... You know, what he lacks in the kickboxing skills, he's going to at least have in the power. So maybe he'll be okay. I, I don't know. Nah, his man. That guy, down, the, his, the heavyweight yeah, he's fighting had the biggest down, smile. Soon, yeah, but as soon as Usada came into the UFC, as you're seeing with a lot of these guys, like, you know, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos, you know, the, the guys that were these big, you know, rough and tough guys before Usada came in, <laughs> and now that Usada's there, they're they're getting taken out easier, and their bodies are looking bad. You know, and, uh, I definitely think that plays a plays a part. <laughs> I guess so, man. I don't know about that, man. Part. I've never, I've never really, uh, I've never ever considered cheating in my whole entire life, man. I mean, I don't know how some of these guys do it, and I mean. You know, it is what it is. Me, me, other fighters have their you have reasons. I, I heard That's there was. You yeah, and I, heard, I also heard. And yeah, right. you know, I just don't like cheating. To be honest, I think cheating is just it's something. It's something totally wrong about cheating. And it's one of those things where when you do it, you can't stop because it it gives you success. So you start to believe psychologically that you can't attain success without it. You know what I mean? So you end up doing it so cautiously, and it's like. Fuck, man, you know, like, that's why you shouldn't cheat in the first place. Like, and even with, with John, with what I heard about John Jones being on, on roids or whatever the case may be, is some type of bad substance. It's just sad, man, because the guy is so talented, man, and damn, it's just yeah, such a bad look. Yeah, but is, is, he, is he talented? Because uh, I don't think he's been clean his whole career, honestly. I, I wow. think he's been, he's been dirty Seriously? his whole career. But, oh, snap. Uh, For real? And I'm going to tell you why. I'm... I'm close with uh, with a guy who's, who's he's fought in the USC and uh, when John Jones got popped the second time he and I were talking and he had said to me he goes I don't think he's been clean his whole career and I was like well why he goes you look at his first couple fights in the UFC he he did good but then after that Matt Hamill fight he was unstoppable like, what he did to people was just ugly. Now, I know Jackson Wink is a great camp, but he just mowed through people <laughs> like they weren't even there. <laughs> so it kind of makes you think. It kind of makes you think. It, it's, it's not wrong to, to think that way if, if you think about it. I mean, his last three years of his career have been, you know, he's almost on the Mark Kerr level of train, le train wrecks in MMA. Almost. Yeah. Almost. So might be a, nah, honestly, guys, what did Joe Rogan say about him? He said something. He said, 
Joe Rogan said something. He said uh, John Jones might be the the biggest what? I forgot the what he said. What did he say? He basically <laughs> said he's the biggest fuck up ever. That's what he said. And because Rogan really, was behind him. And Rogan stood behind him the first time with the with the tainted dick pill. Now I, I'm going to say this: <laughs> You're a millionaire. You're a millionaire. You have more money than most of us will ever see in our entire life. You're getting a Chinese knockoff Cialis pill. I still think it was from the guy who lived <laughs> behind the gym. I don't think it was a teammate. I think it was a guy who, like a homeless guy who lives behind the gym because it's in New Mexico. <laughs> that's, a, that's the meth capital of the world. He buys a knockoff <laughs> Cialis pill from the guy, and he tells Joe Rogan it's because his dick is too big. God, I wish I had that problem. <laughs> But all I have to say is that I like John Jones, man, to be honest, man. I'm a fan of his talent. But the shit that he's been associated with just makes me scratch my head. Like, bro, what the fuck is it? Why, why is this associated with you? Fuck. You know, even the, the stuff with drugs and all that. You know, and then it made me wonder, like I said, man, we're all creatures of habit. When we're used to doing, like, crappy shit, like, it follows us. When we're used to doing steroids, you know, and we're, we have success off, off of it, we continue to do it. Like, whatever benefits us, we will continue to do. And, and even if it's ugly. And, and, and now, everything that I guess he's done in the past is starting to show. And it, it's obvious because of, 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 of these countless allegations and or reportings about his, uh, about his life and decisions he's made and, and all these things he's got popped for. It's just crazy, man. Like, I don't know, man. It, it's sad, too, because we might not see him for another four years. If he needs to go to Ryzen, but here's, that's where here's he needs to go. And here's something me and Tommy were debating. I, I, I want to get, get your opinion on this. Let's say he, uh, they, they do suspend him, right? Who is to sit there and say that he wouldn't do something like, like Risen and, um, and, and kind of maybe eat, eat the suspension in the U.S. and just make his money overseas. Yeah, he might do that. That's something he might honestly do. But, um, yeah, I mean, we, I mean, in some cases, those, some of those leagues don't have regulations like the UFC does. So they might take him on, being that he's a great talent. And it also de- depends on the, on the suspension. If they suspend John Jones for, any, for a year or more, I think a, hopefully it's a year. But he, no, he's uh, you know how it works, man. This is his second offense in a row. He's looking yeah, at three years. I know. Career, I know. And it's California. It's I know. California too. That's what everyone keeps forgetting. It's California. Yeah. It, it would it would be it would be a multiple offense. He would be in that two to four year period of time. That's why I said I wow. being the fact that that he's thirty now to sit out two two more years. I don't think he could afford to do that with everything that happened. Because you got to remember, even his pay changed uh, in this coming fight. He he got paid less than Daniel Cormier did, at least on all. Oh wow! You know, as far as as far as disclosed pay, we don't know, you know, points or 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 whatever that's situated, you know. So and he was he got Conor paid McGregor. Daniel, I'm gonna leave it at before that. Before that, he was he was Conor McGregor level before that. He was he was uh, their he next was like, star. He was like. He Dude, was like he seven, was there. Uh, he was there. Listen, the, uh, w- but he was only UFC doing anywhere from five hundred to to, to eight hundred fifty k. Yeah, but he wasn't listen, doing just, millions of listen to what a, Listen to what I'm about to say. How much did he make? How much did he make in the last fight? How much did he make in the last fight? I'm gonna pull it up. But WWE I mean, purchased the UFC for four point two billion dollars. They haven't even come close to scratching the surface to making their money back. Not even close. The fight nights, the, the well, ratings I are, are the funny part is, I said that the funny part is, is that that that, that they still they still have shares. <laughs> like I I don't see WME owning the UFC within the next two years. I see the UFC getting bought I out. I think you're again. wrong, and I, hopefully, I think, I, think the, I think you're wrong there. But I don't you know, know, bro. You, you can have your opinion on. I it. don't know. I, I well, you see them. Daniel Cormier back. got a million, and John Jones got got took home five hundred k for for the for the fight uh, against Cormier. Yeah, that's that's not that's not too bad. Um, well, you know, I wish him the best, man, and I hope it's not too much of a, a long suspension because MMA MMA is going to miss him, and that's a lot of his that's a lot of his uh his prime years, you know. 
you know, two, three years, yeah. man, of, of being suspended, laid off like that. That's that's a long time, man. You know what I mean? And I'm 30, I mean, so I know. I, yeah, he's 30 now. That's a death <laughs> Yeah, we're the same age. He's, he's older than me by a couple of days. Uh, I'm an 87 baby, too. There's there's a couple of 87 babies in the UFC that are that are beasts. Anthony Showtime Pettis, Alexander Gustafson, Ronda Rousey, uh, obviously John Jones, and a few others, man. Uh, yeah, we, we make some noise, man. We make some noise, man. But we getting old, though. We got, getting old now. I got to ask your opinion on this one. I got to ask your opinion on this one. Owale, do you think within the next five years, Ronda will come back to MMA? After, you uh, know, she spent some time in the... She's going to spend some time in the WWE. She's going to pop out a kid or two. Do you think after she has the, the, the family situated that maybe she does return, or you just think that she's too mentally broken? I don't think she needs to. I don't, I don't think, I don't I think she, she needs to. Need she had a pretty good... But you, but you I don't think she will. Those fighters get itches. She's going to nah, get... Nah, nah, nah. She, nah. She, I think, she's going to be... I think she's going to be immune to that itch. She's going to be immune to that itch. Yeah, man. She's not coming back, bro. She's not money. She's going to make triple the amount of money on one WrestleMania with WWE than she made in a year with the U.S. Exactly. So she, she, <laughs> she, she found a home. She found a home, man. She doesn't have to risk her, 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 pretty, her pretty face um, stepping in that octagon, man, because, man, that last fight was scary, man, and, and the fights before. And it's not easy, man, recovering, you know, from a loss like that or, or any loss that relates to, it's her you camp, know, a TKO, it's KO. Her She's, she's, yeah, I mean, but still, she's too loyal to Edmund. That's the problem. She's too loyal to. Edmund. I mean, if she were, to, if she went to TriStar, I, 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 she would be the scariest woman in the one. world. It might be a little bit of both because even even me, I mean, I'm loyal too, but I'm not gonna be loyal to a fault to to some of my coaches, she man. Was, if you guys, have, I, I, think I mean, you can make the argument I, where she was. She was, man. I think it was more so psychological, man. I'm being honest, man. Uh, her last fight, it looked like um, she got clipped, and it kind of everything went out the window. Like, she just started just trying to survive, you know, um, and, and, and that was it. You know, Amanda smelt it. She was like, I'm going in for the kill because Ronda didn't look the same. And, and, and that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's the thing. When you lose your chin or when you get tagged um, to, you know, when you get tagged to the point where, you know, you know, you've suffered a loss and then you're back in that position again, you almost get flashbacks. When I saw her face, that's what it looked like. She was looking she, like she was back to where she was previously when she got knocked out. And now she's afraid it might happen again. Like when I saw the last fight, that's what I saw. And I'm like, that's not good. You know what I mean? Like before the fight, she was supposed to master that 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 aspect because it's going to happen you know what i mean like you know like for instance like my loss you know the way i lost f- fucking sucked but my job as a fighter is to make sure that in my next fight that i've mastered number one the physical ability to to do something about that you know the technique whatever the case may be and also the mental understanding to say okay this is what i have to do i don't think she did that she didn't go in there with a mental game plan like if i get rocked all right this is what i'm going to do i'm going to shake it off she looked like when she got hit, she was like, oh, shit, what do I do now? Oh, my goodness. No. All right, let me just keep my hand up, and, and maybe that'll help. No. Like, it, it looks scary, man. But like I said, I think she's good where she's at. Um, and, uh, you know, I wish her prosperity. And, uh, yeah, man, she has an opportunity of a lifetime to make, to make quadruple the money she was making in the UFC. So, hey, man, more kudos to her. Well, well I you, think you know, it's the problem with she's in that fight. the perfect storm. It's no, she literally yeah, has the perfect she, storm. Listen, she comes from that wrestling pedigree. You have to remember, her nickname literally came because Roddy Roddy Piper was her freaking yeah. like godfather, so to speak. 100%. So no, 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 no. Judo, Judo Jean literally, LaBelle like, was her, Judo Jean LaBelle was her godfather. I know, and he, and he Judo Jean LaBelle the, the guy Roddy who started Piper into not just wrestling, wrestling but... Uh, but not just brother. I, I, I can tell you wrestling. From he was the 60s, he was a guy dude, when it comes to wrestling. I know my shit. Like, uh, <laughs> he was doing the original stunts in, in the old uh, Bruce Lee movies. You know what I mean? Like, dude, yeah. Like, no, but I think she's kind of good old. Go I think she's kind of good old yeah, because like, Ronda Rousey, she's she's yeah. a badass, and but and she understands. Like, like you go and you go and look at, at WWE right now. They are desperate for. The, the, uh, a female star. They don't have it. They're grasping at straws here and there and, and, and wherever. They're trying to bring freaking um, Ric Flair's daughter in, and then here comes Ronda and, and, um, and, and Shayna Baszler and them, and they got that whole four-horsewoman kind of moniker, 
and I just think it plays right into what what the WWE needs right now. And you know, even if if she was, even if she did win, I think I think WWE would have made her an offer where she could she literally could not refuse either way. When and remember, she's not risking her life. life. You know, we all know no. that WWE she stuff is scripted. So, she, I mean, uh, she not, 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 as though, not, not, not as bad as an MMA fight. She, she, she doesn't have to worry about getting concussed or knocked out. She might get a little couple no, of bruises on her no. legs and her arms. Dude, <laughs> my, uh, one of a very good friend of mine, he, he was a pro wrestler. And, you, you know, if you work the t- like, she wouldn't be working the town. She's a part, she'd be a part-timer. But these guys who work the town, they're concussed almost every night. You know, when oh, you, wow. you just take a fall the wrong... Yeah, you're concussed almost every night. Like, these wrestlers are now uh, donating their brains for CTE studies because, you know, you look at Chris Benoit. He killed his entire family. <laughs> yeah, they, that was, that was scary. His, well, they tested his entire... They tested his brain. Uh, that's how these CTE uh, studies started for wrestlers, and his brain was just... He had the brain of a... I think they said it was a 90-year-old man... With Alzheimer's, that's how bad his brain. Yeah, he also was doing the years of wrestling. Was, it was one of his finishing moves, so you had to yeah. guess that his brain was freaking, you know, mashed potatoes. Basically, <laughs> I yeah, know so that he, 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 he bodies are complete coolest. crap. Yeah. Their bodies are complete that's crap. Crazy. That's why, like, uh, when we had uh, Eddie Gordon on our show, and and we were talking about, you know, when CM Punk was first coming in to. Uh, the UFC, and, and Eddie was saying, like, this guy's body is so bashed and broken from pro wrestling that there's no way he could have an extensive MMA career for the kind of training that you guys do. It, it's impossible. It's impossible. You can't Man, you have... No, but he's making that money, though. You guys have. He's yeah, making that, that money. Is, Man. That. That said, I know you're, you know, you're, you're part of the Rufus crew. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to bash on your teammate too much, but it's, it's. No, 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 he's cool though. He's cool. Kind he's of cool. It, it's nah, kind of he's cool. It's just that. It's one it, of those things where. Here's um, why I think it's wrong. Here's why I think it's wrong. Like I look at a guy like you, and a, a guy like Mike El Shimmy. You guys came up the right way. You came through the amateur circuit. You know what I mean? You, you, you have to have five, at least five wins to go from amateur to professional. You know, and, and you're going on to professional from these, these smaller cards, like Ring of Combat and, you know, CFFC, that, that's a bigger one. But you're not just going right into the UFC with no experience. That's pretty goddamn dangerous. Even giving him a yeah. guy who's only had two <laughs> fights in the UFC, that's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's still dangerous. It's true. And and freaking Ma, what's his name? Uh, Mickey Gall is no joke, bro. He came from the same circuit. We came from Dead Serious. We're in combat. Like yeah. he's a beast. And, you know, he's he came from a very solid pedigree in the East Coast too. Yeah. So it's it's it. And, and the reason why I think it's wrong, it's because you guys that have been cutting your teeth the right way aren't getting the money that he got. And his big gripe with. WWE was, oh, well, I'm getting sick and tired of these part-timers coming in, making more money than me, and I'm going to be here on Monday night, and they're not. They're not going to be here until a year later. So it, it's just, it, it just irritates me because I'm, I'm a purist, bro. You know what I mean? I like the guys who don't talk the crap that they talk, and they just go in there, they fight, they do what they have to do, and then that's it. So it's yeah. it, it's hard for me. Like I respect him for walking into the cage, but it still pisses me off because there's guys that are a <laughs> hundred times better that aren't getting that kind of money. That's and and for me, it's one of those things where I don't like to really knock anyone's hustle. Like the man paid his dues, whether it was in pro wrestling, um, and obviously it was in the WWE. He built his name, and therefore that's why you know honestly he's qualified to make that money and and it pushes me it drives me to want to build my name too to continue to strive and whether i have to start from the bottom up who cares once i build my name then hopefully god willing man i pray to the, to the heavens i'll be able to negotiate that type of that type of money you know um that 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 the stars make but you know and that's what that's that's what it's all about man you know the grind the struggle and then one day being you know being blessed 
you know. So, you know, I'm I'm going to keep working hard. The goal is to, you know, to you know build a few establishments to be uh, eventually a businessman. I can't do that, you know, with, with chip change. You know, I got to make the big bucks. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going, man. I'm going to keep giving my all, uh, no matter what I have to do. You know, um, and I'm doing everything I can in my own power, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what the future on, on, on unravels, man. Thank you guys so much for everything. Oh, uh, it's not a problem, brother. Anything else you want to say before you go, man? Uh, the time is yours, man. Uh, I just wanted to say, man, any, anyone out there, man, uh, who, you know, who's listening, just be encouraged. If you have any goals, continue to push towards it. It doesn't matter if you have support or not. Who cares? At the end of the day, it's your future you have to protect. All right? God loves you, and uh, God bless everyone. As always, Good, Wally, Good luck. pleasure talking to you. Definitely catch up with you again soon, my man. You got it, man. God bless, guys, man. Have a good night.